some things on the PowerPoint. Um, so we're gonna go through a few things and then I'm gonna actually do a demo, okay? So um, if some of the things on the PowerPoint aren't totally clicking, I'm probably gonna show you in the actual demo. So kind of like bank things in your memory and then um, watch the demo obviously as well, okay? So glazing, so when we're glazing, we are putting color on our project, okay? We're putting color, it's the final stage of, of ceramics, okay? So we're putting that glassy coating. Once we have the color on there, and it's gone through the kiln for a second time, we can eat out of it. Well, if it's something that you would eat out of, drink out of it. It's dinnerware safe, dishwasher safe, microwave safe. So if this is like a vase, I could put water in here, I could put flowers in here, and it would be fantastic, okay? It would be usable. So glaze is essentially a glassy coat, okay? Um, because, okay, if I just have a piece of a project that has been fired one time in the kiln. Do we remember the clay term? What's the state of clay? Fired one time in the kiln. <coughs> bisquare, okay? So we've got bisquare, okay? Bisquare, how do we tell if it's bisquare? What are some things? What does it look like? And don't really look at this one. But much whiter in color, yep. And if you have end gobe anywhere, the brown also gets lighter. How else do we tell if it's this square? What does it feel like? Hard clay, so rock-like. So rock-like, much wider in color. What's the last test? Do you remember the test I did? It makes that ting sound, kind of like if you tapped on glass, okay? That's how we tell if it's this square. It's really, really important that we know that we have bisquare because bisquare is the only state of clay that we're gonna put glaze on, okay? So it's really important that you're checking, is my project bisquare? If it's not, don't put glaze on it, okay? Um, I believe all of your tiles have been fired and you were required to fire at least one so everybody should at least have, even if you didn't really want the tile, the reason I made everyone fire a tile was so that you had something to practice glazing on, okay? Um, it's, you know, it's something that you don't really, until you're practicing it and trying it, you may not fully understand it. So you've got that tile to kind of practice your glazing. So we only ever want to glaze this square, okay? Now, when do we glaze? We are going to glaze. There are two times that you can glaze. SRT is always an option. I am never going to dictate what you do in SRT unless you've missed a ton of days and I'm like, you have to work on your project. If you want to come in for SRT solely to glaze, that is fine with me. Okay? Even if you have a project that we're still working on, you can always glaze during SRT. Okay? The other time that you can glaze is if you finished your project, your current project, okay? So as far as we're working on pinch pots right now, if you finished your pinch pots last class, because that's kind of what I had suggested or close to finish, and then today you get them completely finished, maybe you take your worksheets home this weekend so that you get your worksheets done. So then Monday morning, you just have to come in, put your pinch pots on my desk with your packet, and then you're done with the pinch pots. That whole day is for grading. You have nothing to do because you're done. You can glaze. So grading days are really great days to glaze if you have finished the project, okay? So we are not working on glazing in the middle of a project. If you still have work to do on the current project, you are working on that current project, okay? So glazing is done during SRT or free time as far as you've finished a project a little bit early, okay? You should not be finishing a project like five days early just so you can glaze. But if you finish a little bit early, grading days are great days. Um, so we're never gonna be glazing if we're working on a current project, okay? So free time and SRT. Uh, we wanna make sure that we're only glazing best square. We <coughs> talked about that. Um, and then as far as 
glazes go. So everything, well, all the colors are in this cabinet back here. So I'm gonna turn on the lights here for a couple minutes. And if we open this cabinet, this is where all of the glaze is. So what do we need to pay attention to in this cabinet? These two shelves and just the three colors down here. Those are the only ones that you need to worry about. You should not ever worry about these little tiny bottles if you move on to ceramics two. That's kind of an upper level glazing thing. So we're not gonna worry about these little bottles. These are not for you. We're worried about the pint sized bottles, okay? So these two shelves and these three down here. The other thing that's really important in this cabinet are these glaze samples, okay? So if we look right here, this says clear. What color is it? Pink, like Pepto-Bismol pink. So what we need to consider, the color in the bottle is not what it's gonna look like. It has to go through the kiln again. So the color in the bottle is not true to the color that it will end up, okay? So we have these glaze samples. So this is what the glaze will look like after it's been through the kiln that second time. So if I look at clear over here, so clear is literally transparent glaze on, so this is white clay, it looks clear, but in the bottle, it looks pink. So what we have to do is check the glaze sample board, okay? I like raspberry. So I know that this is what it's gonna look like after it's fired. I can come find it. Raspberry looks a little closer to the right color, um, but as long as you check it here, it says the name on here, I promise it's gonna turn out like that. You have to trust the glaze samples. All these chemical reactions happen in the kiln to turn what's in here into what's up here, okay? Um, the other nice thing about this, these are on Velcro, so if you wanna see if a color is gonna look nice next to each other, please just make sure it gets back in the right spot so that you're not confusing everyone, okay? Um, the other nice thing, so this is glaze on white clay, so for the most part, you're gonna look over here. If you have N-gobe anywhere though, glaze on brown clay. So same colors of glaze, it's just the different color of clay. So the clay can change how the glaze looks. So I would say for the most part, glaze on brown clay, it just looks a little bit more earthy. So like if we take brilliant red and put it next, they're pretty similar. It's a little bit more earthy on the brown. So some colors are pretty similar. Some colors look completely different. So this peacock color is more greenish brown on white clay, and it's more of a bluish green on brown clay. So feel free to take them over and take them off. Just make sure they get back in the right spot, okay? Um, so we're trusting this. I promise this is what they're gonna end up to be, okay? Um, the names are labeled underneath the bottles, okay? So just make sure, I like raspberry, here's raspberry, I'm grabbing the bottle, it says raspberry. If you've done all that, I promise you're gonna get raspberry in the end, okay? A um, Couple other things with the bottles, make sure that you grab from the bottle, not the lid. After a while, they get pretty crusty throughout the semester. Sometimes kids are not great about putting the lids on tightly. I always say trust no one. Do not trust the person that used this color before you put the lid on tightly. Always check. The other thing that we wanna make sure that we do, we're gonna check the lid to make sure it's on tightly and we're also gonna shake it. So once we've checked the lid, the glaze can kind of separate. A lot of these glazes have not been used much since last school year, so we've had a summer in between. We wanna make sure that we shake so that they're not separated and so that they are how we want them to be. So we're gonna shake, always grab from the bottle. Uh, these bottles, so any individual bottle, depending on the color, is anywhere from, nine dollars to twenty dollars for just one bottle okay so this is where a lot of your student fee money goes um reds and purples for whatever reason are really hard to make and so they're really expensive um clear because clear doesn't have many chemicals in it it's clear it is less expensive so it's all dependent on what's in the color so we want to make sure that we're not wasting it so if we have a crusty lid it's not on very well or someone kind of just like set it on there. You grab it from the lid, the bottle drops, and you're glazed. We don't want that to happen, okay? One, you're a mess. 
Two, you've created a mess that you now have to clean up and we're wasting glaze. Um, the glazes that have this kind of rusty color, there are a couple of them, these ones will stain your clothes, okay? So do keep that in mind. The rusty colors will stain your clothes. Grab an apron if you're using them or if you don't care about the clothes that you're wearing, that's great too. But anyone that has this rusty color, and there are a few, those will stain your clothes, okay? So keep that in mind. Um, there are some <laughs> colors that are matte colors. So satin black, okay, if you look at it, it doesn't have a super glossy look to it. It's matte, so low gloss. Um, satin black, mudslide, and Spanish moss are all matte glazes. So that is how they're gonna look straight out of the bottle. They're just not super shiny and that's just the way that they are. Um, every other glaze, if it is glossy on the tile, it's gonna be glossy right out of the bottle. You don't have to do anything to make it glossy, okay? Um, so we've got a couple of those. And then any of the glazes that look like they have little color explosions, those are called crystal glazes, okay? So crystal glazes, and this one is one that hasn't been shaken, it literally has little rocks in the bottom of it. Those are the crystals. The rocks are what form these little color explosions. So any of these little colorful splotches, those are from the rocks. So this is a glaze that you do want those little rocks on the surface of your project. I'm gonna use one of these in my demo so you can kind of see what it looks like. Um, but those are crystal glazes, okay? So we've got a few of those. What else? Do I need to tell you anything else? Uh, when we are glazing, you always want to grab a paper towel, not a piece of canvas, not a building board, okay? We don't want to get glaze on the building boards and the canvases that we use for our wet clay um, because we don't want to mix the glaze with the wet clay. So if you're glazing, you should always be using paper towel, not canvas, not building board. The other thing that I have grabbed is a banding wheel. So another term to commit to memory, banding wheel. A banding wheel, it just makes it nice if you're glazing like a bowl or something. It's kind of like a cake decorating stand. You can turn it as you're glazing, it's kind of nice. You certainly don't have to use it. Um, I kind of like them. They are in where all of your other tools are over there, like the rolling pins and all that. Top shelf all the way to the left. There are these metal ones, and then there are also some smaller ones. So metal ones, these little ones, they work the same. They're just shorter. The metal ones are two pieces, are two pieces, okay? So always grab from the bottom. You can imagine if you grab from the top, that's gonna make quite a noise. So always grab from the bottom for the metal ones, okay? Um, and banding wheels, you guys are welcome to use those for anything. It's not just for glazing. If you're doing a project and you feel like it would be nice to be able to spin it, you can certainly use those for your actual building part of your project as well. Okay, let's see. Paper towel. We did that. We did that. We did that. Beautiful. Okay, all glazes that I have over here, I already said this, but I'm going to say it again. Every single glaze, dinnerware safe. So if it's something that you're going to eat or drink out of, you're safe to do that. Safe to put in the dishwasher, safe to put in the microwave. Did I miss anything? I think that's right. Um, so we're going to make bowls later on here in the semester. You're going to have the opportunity to make a mug. All of those totally safe to use as long as you have glazed them correctly and completely. Okay, so that's kind of cool. All right. So we probably already kind of noticed glaze is different than paint, right? So first way that it's different, it doesn't look the same in the bottle that it'll look in the end. So glaze is different than paint. Therefore, we are not gonna mix it like paint because, so if we're mixing, you know, a green and a blue, what does our brain tell us? If we're mixing like a green and a blue, what color do you think we're gonna get? What does, if you were mixing actual paint, green and blue? A blue green, right? Yep, <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, so you're still probably gonna get something like that. However, because the color is not true to color in the bottle, 
We absolutely never, ever, ever want to be pouring two colors into a bowl, mixing them together, and then putting them on their project on your project. There is a way to change the colors. I will talk about that in the demo, but we are never gonna mix like we mix paint, okay? Because it's so unpredictable what you're actually gonna get. If you mix too much, there's nowhere to put it. There's no bottle to put it in. If you don't mix enough, you're probably not ever gonna get that same color since again, it's not true to color in the bottle. So we are never, ever, ever gonna mix just like paint. We are gonna keep color theory in mind, which I'll talk about a little bit later, but we are never, ever, ever gonna mix them like paint, okay? That's really, really important. All right, I think we're gonna go ahead and go into demo mode and I'll go over a lot of these things, okay? So I'm gonna be right here. <coughs> I want everybody to come over into a spot where you can see what I'm doing. Do you want it in the vase? Yeah, that's what I did before. And then just make sure like you can see what I'm doing. I'm not so sure if it's actually gonna work. I feel like I, here. Is that, yeah? <laughs> okay. Good, okay, awesome. Okay, so we're over here, I've got my bisqueware. Now this one has had glaze on it before and I wiped it off. That's why we have that stain. So that's one of those rusty colors that I said stains. This is still white clay bisqueware. Again, I have just wiped glaze off of it so it's stained. So just kind of ignore that part of it. I know that it's bisqueware. Bisqueware is what we're going to glaze, right? We don't wanna glaze anything other than bisqueware. And um, I've got some paint brushes that are nice and clean. You're gonna use the same paint brushes that you use for putting Engob on or for smoothing, okay? Just make sure they're nice and clean. The other thing that I grabbed that I'm gonna show you how to use, this is called a trailer, okay? We can glaze trail with it, which I'll talk about. These are in this white, little, or white, that's blue. That blue <laughs> basket um, right there, okay? So there are quite a few of them. So I'm gonna show you about that. I've gotten a couple colors of glaze. I've got my banding wheel. I've got my napkin. You can imagine if I'm getting glaze all over this napkin, I can just throw it away. If I'm glazing right on the banding wheel, I've got a lot of cleaning to do. So always a napkin, okay? All right, let's do it. So couple things to keep in mind. As far as glazing goes, we have to do a specific number of coats depending on how we're applying the glaze, okay? And if we are doing, if we are glazing something that has a defined inside, so a vessel, a bowl, a mug, a vase, a vessel, something that's gonna hold something, we always wanna glaze the inside first. So in this situation, this is a bowl. I could pretty easily get to it with a paintbrush. So if you would like to use a brush to get in there, you could. I'm gonna do a different method, but let's say something like this, some sort of a vase. I can't very easily get in there with a brush, right? So we always want to glaze the inside of our vessel first, if it's a vessel. Um, and if it's a vessel that we can't get to with a brush, we're gonna do um, the method of glazing called pouring. And it's exactly as it sounds. So I'm not gonna actually glaze this. I'm gonna pour in here. So I'm gonna grab my color of glaze, check the lid, it's on tight. I'm gonna give it a good shake. I'm gonna open it and I'm literally gonna pour in. Okay, so I'm gonna pour some glaze in there. This is why the lids get crusty. I'll put that down there for a sec. And then I'm literally gonna swirl it around so that it gets all of the bisqueware on the inside. And then it's really important that we get all the excess back into the bottle, okay? If we have a puddle of glaze, um, what happens when it goes through the kiln, if you have too thick of a puddle, it bubbles up and it causes these like little sharp bubbles in the bottom, or it can completely crack and it could crack your project as well. So we definitely wanna get the excess out. I also wanna kind of get this rim. So as I'm pouring out, I'm gonna spin it. Oh, come on. Ah, so this is why glaze can get messy. All right, got it. Pouring is definitely messy. So I'm gonna kind of let it sit there, tap it, make sure I get all of that excess out so that I don't have a big puddle in the bottom. If you open a glaze bottle and it's really thick, the glaze is really thick, it doesn't seem very pourable and it doesn't seem like a consistency that would be good to work with, you can go over to the sink, add water, 
put the lid on, shake it up. I would just add a little bit of it at a time and you're just gonna add until it's a good consistency, okay? So if it's too thick, we can fix it. If the glaze is too thin, you really just have to do more coats. So pouring one coat. So if we're pouring glaze, one coat is sufficient. It'll cover sufficiently, it'll look great once it's fired. Now, the reason that we glaze the inside first, if we look at this, okay, I wanna do a different color on the outside. But if you look, I kinda got a little bit messy and I got glaze on the outside where I didn't want it. The nice thing about glaze, as long as it has not been through the kiln, bless you, I can sponge it off. It will sponge off, even if I were to let this sit for weeks, if I came back and was like, oh crud, I didn't want that on there. I could sponge it off with a wet sponge as long as it hasn't been in the kiln, okay? So I'm gonna take my wet sponge and I'm going to just sponge that off of there. Um, the rusty colors will leave a uh, stain. As long as it's a stain and not glaze, you're good. Okay, so I can get that off of there. Even if this had completely dried, I could still get it off of there, okay? Um, so inside pouring is good. If you can get to the inside with a brush, you don't have to pour. If you're nervous and you're like, I don't know, it still looks like there's a lot down in there, you could take a brush and kind of just like move it around. And if you had a ton of excess, put it back into the bottle, okay? Um, but when you pour one coat is sufficient coverage, okay? So then on the outside, does pouring make sense? No, that would be a disaster. So on the outside, I am gonna use a brush. So I'm gonna go ahead, grab my banding wheel with my paper towel, and I'm gonna go ahead and use a brush. Anytime you are using a brush to apply glaze, three to five coats, no less than three, okay? I'm gonna show you, so this is an example, less than three coats. Do you see how the bisque kind of showed through again? It looks really splotchy and frankly not very good at all. You agree? That's because she didn't get sufficient coats. And so then when it was fired, it didn't get glossy. We see the bisque through and it didn't look even, right? It's really splotchy. This is a situation where this was not glazed correctly and completely, okay? Luckily, this is the outside, so she poured the inside. Inside looks great, doesn't it? So inside's great. So since this is a cup, the inside or a vase, whatever it might be, we could still put water in here and flowers and it would be okay. It just looks cruddy on the outside, okay? But if this were on the inside, water would still be able to seep through because we've got bisque showing through, okay? So what the glaze does, it literally forms a glass coating so that the water can't um, seep through because what we know about this square, it's permanent, so it's not gonna break down anymore. It's also what? Permanent yet porous, yep. So we need that glassy coating, especially on something that we're gonna use for you know eating off of, drinking out of, putting flowers in. So on the outside, I'm gonna go ahead and brush. So I've got a new color. If you wanted to use the same color, you can. You can use as many colors as you want. Um, and I'm gonna show you here how to, if we wanna make a new color. So I'm gonna start with this. I'm gonna get it, I'm gonna touch my inside color so that I know that I don't have any bisque that's gonna be peeking through. Okay, now it's really important that you pay attention to how many coats you've done. Okay, you're gonna notice one coat is gonna look the same thing as three coats. So it's really important that you're paying attention, maybe even writing down how many coats you've done. Okay, so, and this is one of those colors that will stain, so be careful. So I've got one coat on there. Looks like it covered pretty well, right? And some kids would say, I don't know, it looks pretty good. I think I'm gonna go ahead and fire it. She thought the same thing. Looks pretty good. Looks like it got thick enough. I'm just gonna fire it. Always do at least three coats if you're using a brush, okay? 
Um, we do want to let it dry a little bit in between. If you're using the same color for the next coat, it doesn't have to be completely dry. Um, if you're switching colors, which I'll talk about in a second, you definitely want it to be completely dry. So, um, and if you want to, you can like do little tally marks on your paper towel so that you don't forget. Um, one coat looks like three coats, looks like 10 coats. So it is really important that you pay attention. Okay, so I'm getting coat number two. You can probably see why the napkin is very helpful at this point. Otherwise you would have a banding wheel to sponge off. Okay, so I got that second coat on there. Feeling good, okay. So now we've got two coats. I could do another little tally mark. You also may want to either on your napkin or on like your sketch page, write down what colors you're using. There are a bunch of colors that look exactly like that straight out of the bottle. So if you don't have time to finish in one sitting, you know that you can go back. Your eyes are just as good as mine. There are a bunch of colors that look like this. So if you're like, hey, what color is that? I'm gonna, could be peacock, could be amber, could be, I don't know, okay? So make sure you write down what colors that you are using so that you don't um, run into problems there, okay? So I've got two coats on there, right? Here's how we make new colors. I'm gonna switch colors. As long as you have three to five coats with a brush, you can use as many colors as you want. So instead of mixing, we layer, okay? So I'm gonna put this one away and I'm gonna grab one of my uh, crystal glazes. Okay, I made sure the lid was on tight, shaking it really well. If you have a crystal glaze and you can see all of the crystals are stuck at the bottom, especially if it's a brand new bottle, sometimes you have to take the wrong end of a paintbrush and loosen them up and shake it. Um, so just make sure that there aren't crystals stuck at the bottom, okay? So since we're switching colors, I wanna make sure that that previous color completely dries and it gets kind of um, chalky as it dries. And I'm also gonna switch my napkin because I don't wanna contaminate. We really don't wanna contaminate glazes. Obviously, I'm not gonna use the same brush. If I dip that in there, I'm making a whole new color in here and that's gonna screw everyone up because it's not gonna be what's up there anymore, right? So either wash your brushes really, really well when you're done um, or grab a new brush and um, clean them all at the end. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna fold this over so that we're not wasteful. Okay, and then I know that I've got um, a fresh napkin, so I'm not gonna contaminate there. And it looks like we are just about dry. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and start with this one. This is one of those crystal glazes, so we want the rocks. The rocks are what form the little explosions, okay? So, with the crystal glazes, so you can kind of see the little rocks that come out on my brush, I like to kind of splotch the surface, blot, splotch, so that I know that I'm getting those rocks, okay? So you can kind of see them on the surface. The other thing that you can do is when your glaze layer is still wet, if you wanna pick rocks out of the glaze bottle and place them on there so you have more explosions, you can do that. Some of the crystal glazes have more crystals than others. Okay, but I tend to kinda like splotch it so that I know that those crystals are getting on the surface. Okay, a couple other things as I'm doing this, um, so what happens when we fire our project for the second time with glazes? So first firing makes your clay permanent, right? Second firing turns the glaze into glass. So right now it's literally liquid glass that we then have to put into the kiln so all these chemical reactions happen and it turns into that glassy coating. So when it goes into the kiln, it heats up to that really high temperature, almost 2000 degrees, and the glaze completely liquefies and completely melts, okay? And then as it cools down, it solidifies. The other thing that happens when it melts is that it gets sticky, okay? So keep that in mind for a question that I'm gonna ask you later. So because the glaze completely melts, 
Um, we really don't want to do detail work with glaze. All right, I think I got that third coat on there. So I'm going to give you an example of something that's happened in the past. So I had a student, she made a pig out of her pinch pots, okay? So two pinch pots for the body, two smaller pinch pots for the head. She added slabs for the ears. She added a little nose. It was so cute, okay? So she goes to glaze it as bisqueware. We have a color called pig pink. Okay, seems like a good color to use. She brushes on three coats of pig pink over the entire pig, okay? And then she says, well, I want my pig to have eyes. So she takes black and she spots, like just puts two little black dots for the eyes, okay? Before firing, looks awesome, okay? Cute pink little pig with black dots. Has to go in the kiln, right? Because that glaze has to turn into glass. So I put it in the kiln. The kiln gets really hot, the glaze melts, and then it solidifies as it comes back down. Pig came out of the kiln. What did pig look like? What did its eyes look like? <laughs> crying, crying eyes, okay? <laughs> so when we put a color over a color, they kind of mix and melt over each other. So we really don't wanna do super detail work. Now, if a glaze is next to each other, not overlapping, they should stay put. So, like on this tile, this student did gray just on that part and then the black and then they actually splattered some white over top of it so the white kind of spread out a little bit. So as long as they are touching, not overlapping, they should stay put. But anytime you overlap a color over a color, it's probably gonna kind of spread, drip, melt. You're not gonna have that super detail work anymore. So. Do keep that in mind, okay? So that we don't have crying children when their pig is crying, okay? Um, so next to not overlapping is great. So you can see these yellow dots over the gray. That was yellow over gray and they did kind of spread out a little bit. It's not gonna like totally spread out, especially if it's on a flat surface because you think of a flat surface, the glaze isn't having a surface to drip down, right? But if I were to put a super detail work on here, it's gonna totally just drip. Does that all make sense? Yeah. Okay. Um, the other thing that we need to think about, so I layered glazes so it's gonna form a new color. Okay. I highly, highly, highly recommend layering. Layering can form beautiful, brilliant new colors. They're unpredictable though, right? Now, you still need to keep color theory in mind. So. If we put cool colors over cool colors, it's probably gonna look pretty good. So what are my cool colors? Blue, purple, green, there it is, okay. Warm over warm, gonna look okay. What are my warms? Red, yellow, orange, okay. And then what are my neutrals? The rest. Brown, black, white, gray, okay. Those ones are gonna kind of be able to go either way. Um, if you think about what would it look like if I were mixing it with paint? It's still gonna ring true, but we're just not sure. So if you put two layers of yellow and a layer of blue, we're probably gonna get some sort of a green, okay? Some sort of a green, that's right. Um, but we're not exactly sure what that green color is gonna look like. So still think about color mixing when you're layering, but just know that it's not gonna be, I can't tell you exactly what that color is gonna look like, okay? So what I did, I layered peacock, so it's kind of a greenish, brownish, bluish color, over monsoon seas, which is a crystal glaze that's kind of bluish, greenish. Is that probably gonna look okay? a bluish, greenish, brownish over a bluish, greenish. I think that's probably gonna look okay. So think about color mixing, but just know that it's unpredictable, okay? Highly, highly recommend layering. I think that layering usually gives you some really cool outcomes. Um, that's one of the reasons that I had you fire your tile, at least one tile, no matter what. Even if you have no interest in that tile, you can kind of do some tests with the glaze to kind of figure out what it does, okay? Now, I just got done telling you that we cannot do detail work. We cannot do detail work, okay? There is one way that we can kind of do detail work, okay? So I talked about this trailer bottle, okay? We can put glaze in here. So if I put glaze in here, 
It is easier than it looks if the glaze is thick, thin it out with water, okay? So I'm gonna get some in here. Do it over the sink if you're nervous. Okay, and then I'm gonna grab a paper towel. I would recommend practicing. I just washed this out last period and so it may still have some water. So I'm gonna tap, tap, tap. And it makes like fine lines, okay? Now I just got done telling you, you can't do detail work because it'll melt. Now, this is a little plate. This is bisquare. There is no glaze on it yet, okay? No glaze at all. So what if I do some detail work Maybe I'm gonna make, a, I don't know what, this design. Okay, obviously I would spend more time. The other thing that's kind of neat, if you wanted to draw a design in pencil so that you have kind of an outline and then go over it, guess what happens to pencil in the kiln? It burns off, pencil will go away. Okay, so this is right on the bisquare, right out of the trailer bottle one coat is sufficient, okay? But this is a plate, so what is my problem right now? You can't put anything on it. It's bisque right here, right? So I still need three coats of glaze everywhere else. Do be careful if you don't tap every once in a while. Here, I'll show you what happens. You'll kind of have air pockets that explode. So you do wanna tap every once in a while to make sure that the glaze is staying down in there. Okay, now here's my issue. That's super detailed and great. Not really great, but super <laughs> detailed. But I don't have three coats everywhere else, okay? Once this dries, I've got clear. Clear is completely transparent, right? It's not a color, right? Clear is not a color. Are we all in agreement there? So clear has the least amount of chemicals. Once this dries, I can do three coats of clear, and for the most part, my design should stay put, but I still have, since clear is transparent, my design will show through, but it'll also have three coats everywhere else that I need it, okay? So this is an example of that. So this person did a blue design in the bottom, right on the bisque, three coats of clear over top, and then we were good. Okay, now here's the misconception. Think back to our piggy, okay? Same student, three coats of pink, two little black dots for the eyes. I got it, I'm just gonna put three coats of clear over the eyes, right? I'm gonna put it in the kiln. Is it the clear that makes it not run? So is my pig gonna have crying eyes if I do three coats of clear over the black? Yes because you have still done a color over a color, pink, black over pink. You've still done color over color. Clear is not what makes it not run. What made it not run is that I did a color straight onto the bisque, and then I just did three coats of clear over it so that I would have sufficient coverage, okay? So really the only way to do detail work, color next to a color but not overlapping, or color straight on the bisque, and then three coats. And I would recommend if you're doing some kind of design like this, use the trailer, because if I'm using a brush, what do I have to make sure of? How many coats? Three. three coats. So if you're doing some detailed design with a brush, you've got to go over that same design three times and it may not look good in the end, okay? Um, please, please, please make sure you wash these out really, really well. If glaze dries in this tip, it hardens. They are really, really hard to unclog. And if they're clogged so much that I cannot unclog them, they go in the trash. And when they're gone, they're gone, okay? So I'm gonna grab the color, make sure you know what color you had in there. I'm gonna dump any excess out. Okay, and then if you take this over the sink, fill it with hot water, put your finger over it, shake it until there is no glaze left in here. Fill it with water again, put the lid back on, and make sure water can run through it, okay? Then you know it's clean, and then it can go back in the bin, okay? Please, please, please do not clog those. Um, so on your tiles, if you have some detail work, you could essentially use the glaze trailer for all parts of it, 
because you only need one coat when it's in the glaze trailer, right? So you could just do one coat with the glaze trailer and it's pretty detailed. So you could get in there, switch it to the next color, and then that would maybe be an easy way if your tiles are fairly detailed. Um, so because if a color is next to but not overlapping, it shouldn't melt and blend, okay? Um, I wanna show you one other just kind of extra, just if you want type thing. So my bowl's kind of dry. So dripping is another just kind of like decorative thing that you can do. So I'm gonna grab one of these brushes that kind of is like a bushy tail type brush. Okay, I'm gonna load it pretty well with glaze and then I'm gonna touch it and kind of tap, tap it on the surface. You can go inside, you can go outside and it just makes these little drips. Okay, so since I already have sufficient glaze coverage underneath my drips, one coat is enough. If I were doing my drips right on the bisque, I would have to let them dry and then do what? Clear coat over top of it. You could do another color over your drips, just know that it would probably melt and mix, but maybe that's what you want, okay? Since it's a drip and not like a detailed design, maybe you do wanna do another color. So that's just kind of like a decorative option. Um, last thing that we need to make sure of. So if I flip this over, Okay, it was sitting flat on here, but there was still a lot of glaze that snuck under. So if I put this in the kiln just like this, what did I tell you? The glaze gets really hot, it melts, it liquefies, and it gets sticky. And then it cools back down and whatever was sticky is stuck, right? So even this little amount of glaze that snuck under on the bottom of my bowl, that's gonna stick to my kiln, okay? When I go to pull your project up, it's gonna break, probably, most likely. It'll at least chip out the bottom. And I'll have a kiln shelf to clean up, which is a headache, okay? So, really, really important. What would you say that we call the bottom of a project? The base or the? Foot. Okay, the foot. <laughs> so the foot of your project is the bottom, right? We always want to have a dry foot. So term to commit to memory, dry foot. So a dry foot is the bottom of a project that is completely free of glaze. Okay, and remember I said, as long as it hasn't been fired in the kiln, we can sponge it off no matter how long it's been. So I'm gonna take a wet sponge and I'm gonna sponge that. Now, these rusty colors, a stain is okay. A stain is not glaze, so it won't stick. So all this, like rusty, that's fine, that's a stain. We just wanna make sure that there is no actual glaze, okay? If it's not a project that has an obvious foot, so like your tiles, and this person didn't do this, you, you could glaze everything except for right where your feet hit the kiln, okay? Um, if it's a project that you're like, I don't know what is the foot, sit it on the table how you want it to be displayed. Anything that hits the table, that's your foot, so you wanna make sure it's free of glaze, okay? Oh, and look what I just did. Okay, so dry foot, and then once you are completely done glazing, and only when you are completely done glazing, you're gonna take it into your cart, and we're gonna put it on the shelf that says bisque with glaze, ready for second firing. I call it the duh shelf. There's no new term to remember there. It's just bisque with glaze on it, ready for second firing. So I'm gonna take it in there, I'm gonna put it on that shelf. Do not put it on that shelf unless it is completely glazed with a dry foot, okay? If you put a partially glazed project on that cart, I'm assuming that it's ready to go. I'm not gonna ask you if it's on that cart, I'm loading it in the kiln, okay? So if you have a partially glazed project, what do you think you're gonna do with it? Partially glazed, you didn't have time to finish. Where is it going? In your shelf space, I would also recommend writing down either on your napkin or in your packet what colors you were using and how many coats you've done if you hadn't finished coating an area, okay? Um, let's see, do I need to tell you anything else? Oh, if you have carvings in your project, so this is not a great example since you didn't glaze it very well, but like on this one where I have my carvings, 
it may seem like it disappears whenever you glaze it because the glaze has some thickness right out of the bottle. Once it goes through the kiln, the glaze flows into the carved areas and it's gonna get darker in the carved lines and than it is everywhere else. So your carvings will come back. You will be able to see them, okay? So that's one thing. Let's see what else do I need to tell you? All right, we already talked about glazing inside first, right? Keep brushes clean, don't contaminate. Um, I do have a little glossary of, depending on what technique you're using, how many coats you need to do, okay? And then last thing, four times this semester, you need to get a glaze grade. So we do seven projects. Four of those projects, you will have to say, okay, it's done, it's out of the kiln. Anyone remember finished product? What's our, our term? You can look. Completely finished, fired two times in the, gla in the kiln, once with glaze. What was it? Anybody? What's on it? Glaze. Glaze wear. There it is. Glaze wear. So it's always going to be some kind of a wear. Bisque wear, green wear, glaze wear. It's got glaze on it. It's been fired two times in the kiln, once with glazes. It's got the glassy coating. It is glaze wear. So four times this semester, you will need to bring me a piece of your glaze wear with your packet. Glaze rubrics are in the very back of your packet, okay? You'll just bring it to my desk. Mrs. Fowler, I want a glaze grade. There's nothing to fill out on your end. I will fill out the rubric, okay? Really quickly, if we turn over here, this is a glaze rubric. It just looks a little prettier than the ones in your packet look, okay? What is on the glaze rubric? Glaze layers are the correct thickness. Yeah, if you guys want to kind of hop back to your seat. Glaze layers are the correct thickness. Okay, we want to make sure of that. Glaze layers cover evenly. Okay, so it's even, it's not splotchy, it's not ugly looking. You have a dry foot. Okay, that's going to be a pretty obvious one. It is neat, clean, and complete and you're exploring new glazing ideas. Maybe you're trying dripping, you're trying layering, you're trying out the glaze trailer, okay? 25 points for a glaze grade, four times. Remember for a glaze grade, I am not grading your project anymore. So even if you got a C on the project, you could still potentially get an A plus on your glaze, okay? So that is your job to bring your glaze wear to me. I will not say, hey, do you want a glaze grade? So you have to pick which ones you get graded. Four glaze grades, they are not due until the end of the semester, but if you want me, like I will take them at any point, but they're not actually due. They won't go in the grade book until the end of the semester, okay? Any questions on glazing?